so I think I think you'll be pleased. Just as long as you know, those will be the rough edges in my talk. Uh, that uh, I can't do it without that because I can't. I'm not going to pull the wool over anybody's eyes. Yeah, but this is very impressive. Incredibly impressive. Right? Yeah. Well, people want to be able to make the gate of their money back. Do you think you're going to be able to get any more uh, sign-ups today? Do you think? We'll be double than that. That's incredible. That was uh, 20. No, we can we can at least get 40. Okay, well, whenever you want to uh, communicate okay. to them, yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm ready to go. Thank you. The first voice was Loftus, L-O-F-T-U-S, Cuddy, C-U-D-D-Y, um, the attorney for Mr. Uh, Wei Chin Tang. And um, anyway, and then the other voice was, of course, Wei Chin himself. I'll be back shortly. Mr. Cuddy just said that the November 13th meeting will be an incredible zoo with a lot of people there. This is Loftus Cuddy. I think so. All right. Will you be the translator, Mike? Yeah. Uh, okay. Good morning, everyone. My name is Loftus Cuddy, and I am Wei Tang's uh, lawyer, representing him with respect to 12 charges that he's facing in the Ontario Court of Justice that were brought by the Ontario Securities Commission, the OSC. And uh, there are about 13,000 documents in this case, and I cannot say I've read them all, but I've read a lot of them. So I think I know as much about this case as, as anyone. And I can tell you that the outcome of what's going to happen at the trial, which begins in April next year, is not at all certain. It's not a foregone conclusion. But the reason uh, Mr. Tang has convened this meeting today on behalf of the investors in overseas is because on November 13, coming up, um, a, an extraordinary motion is going to be taking place. In March of 2009, Mr. Tang was uh, prevented from trading any further by a cease trade order. Notwithstanding all the money Mr. Tang has made on behalf of investors over 15 years, he had sustained some losses in 2008, which seems to have led to a run on uh, uh, requests for redemptions which Mr. Tang could not meet, which led to a uh, cease trade order going into place in March. Now shortly after the uh, order was made, as some of you might know, um, an investors committee uh, convened a meeting and uh, some 90 investors signed a statement saying they wanted the cease trade order to be lifted. And that's what Mr. Tang has asked me to try to do on November the 13th. Uh, the motion is taking place at 9.30 in the morning at 20 Queen Street West at the offices of the OSC and the public is welcome to attend.
Copies of the motion record that Mr. Tang filed should be available upon request to any interested person. But at the heart of the motion is the fact that 22 persons, some of you might be here today, have signed authorization saying that notwithstanding everything we know about what Mr. Tang is going through, we want Mr. Tang to get our money back for us. Even though we know he's facing charges, and even though we know he's lost money, we still want him to trade for us. And this is a very unusual situation. <coughs> it's very rare that persons who have had that kind of confidence in uh, anyone in those circumstances. I believe that the motion is justified because the OSC's uh, jurisdiction is only to protect the public. So if 22 members or 52 members or however mem many members of the public say uh, we are aware of the risks but we still want to trust Mr. Tang's methodology to prove our, to trade on our, our behalf under the supervision of a senior broker and under the auspices of the OSC, we want to do that. So therefore, the public's interest is protected, in my opinion. So that's Mr. Mo, uh, Mr. Tang's motion in a nutshell, and uh, I'd be pleased to answer any questions, but before I do, I might like to ask a general question uh, of you. Do we have any investors here who are amongst the 22 people whose names are on the consent forms? Okay. Thank you. Well, if I might ask, you don't have to answer if you don't want to, but knowing what you know about the charges he's facing, uh, why are you prepared to uh, ask him to trade, and continue to trade for you? Can anybody answer that? Because all the charges are based on the accounting materials uh, that uh, they have access to. But we want him to trade on behalf of us uh, because because we are we believe we are able to control the risks under our supervision so you still have confidence in mr tang's ability to make money i believe there is a chance anybody else First time to be here. We let Mr. Town to trade for us because that's the only hope that we have. Uh, we can kill him a hundred times, but there's no hope for our uh, recovery of our loss. Right. If anybody wants to ask me any questions or make any comments, we can do that now. We once asked Mr. Town to trade on our behalf under the supervision of the clients committee. 
但是这个监督是什么样子的监督才能才能是有效的监督？因为他在结婚这个情况下，没有通过我们委员会的同意，他又录取了一个新的客户，那这个客户呢，都在那个安城这些委员会的，也说在安城监控监呃监控下了，那么他这个钱。But the supervision wasn't very effective because even during that process, Mr. Tang uh, signed in another client and used that money to pay other clients. Oh, that's a mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's a that. Okay. Well, that, this is an open forum. <laughs> Could you summarize what's being discussed? <laughs> well, uh, uh, one of them is trying to stop him from saying that, but the others are saying we should give him an opportunity to speak and discuss. Yeah, just carry on. Yeah, because there were disagreements whether he should go on. Just is the charges of the OSC. Yeah. 那么，他会在如果有赚钱人民的话，他不在安省证券委员会的监督下，可以到其他的区域，不在他的法律区域内，为我们超凡。他也一样可以可以归我们监督。如果他有人，If Mr. Tang has the ability to make profit in the market, he can very well move outside the jurisdiction of the OSC to do the trading elsewhere. 可以吗？ Is that possible? Well, it is true that my reading of the cease trade order uh, extends only to the jurisdiction of Ontario. And in a, in a digital global village, it is very well possible, in my legal opinion, that he could trade elsewhere, but he, I don't think he could trade on behalf of an Ontario resident. Question is... Is Mr. Tom confident enough to uh, make to recoup the losses for our clients? That's an easy question to answer. Okay. Okay. Mr. Tang has a level of confidence which would knock your socks off. Okay. I like this. I agree with you. Okay. Suppose Mr. Tang has the ability and confidence to do that, but as far as I know, the court is going to sentence him. So, this, after the verdict of the court, is it still possible for him to return, pay us back the money? The verdict of the court is not something that can be predicted with 100% certainty. It's an important question. Some of the evidence looks pretty damning against Mr. Tang. He's presumed to be innocent. We do not have any report from the uh, OSC that is demonstrative of improper doings. And the scope and nature of any penalty is entirely a matter of speculation at this point. There be a penalty at all. I know that Mr. Tang is determined to fight all charges at all levels for as long as it takes. So the result of the uh, outcome of the court, which won't be until June of 2010, uh, is uh, it's something that we have to wait and see. So Mr. Tang can trade, if the court allows him, between now and then, and Mr. Tang believes he can make money between now and then. That's uh, better than half a year. <laughs> I'm not endorsing anybody investing in Mr. Tang or whatever they do with their money. I, I'm just answering questions with respect to the legal possibilities. <laughs> My personal opinion is that if Mr. Tang has the ability to do that, and if the verdict of the court is that he is innocent, then he should have enough opportunities to pay us back the money. Therefore, I don't care about 
whether it's a waiting of five years or ten years. That's my pr so. Therefore, I don't support the motion. I lost my confidence in, in Mr. Town because in the previous uh, operations, he was under the supervision of the committee, but he did things in a different way. Therefore, I don't support. You act as Mr. Town's lawyer, but we, as victims of this uh, incident, we have no lawyer. Therefore, we're not on an equal basis, and that's not fair to us. Well, I don't think there's any element of unfairness. Everybody has their particular role to play, and everybody's performing their role in good faith. I know I am mine, and I, I'm certain that you are yours. It's only speaking for myself, and I was not on behalf of anybody else. But thank you for making that clear. If there is an investors committee, uh, it's a good thing that it convene and make itself uh, its, 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 its positions known to Mr. Tang. And I'm sure Mr. Tang is going to emphasize this one feature about the order that we're seeking, is that Mr. Tang would be under the direct supervision of a very senior portfolio manager who would be implementing Mr. Tang's advice. So any transition that might have to take place, should there be a sentencing, would be with uh, someone who would be uh, fully capable of carrying on Mr. Tang's um, history of success. How much money do you have so far, and how um, how are you going to do that the transactions? Well, I think when you get into the the details of how it's going to be, you can consult through the investors committee or with Mr. Tang. Um, I'm only on for asking the OSC to put in place the law of Ontario and permit Mr. Tang to trade on behalf of anyone who consents. That's all I'm on for. I'm going to leave my cards on the table, and anyone's more than uh, welcome to, to contact me. Mr. Tang and I are open books. In fact, there's a book being written. Mr. Gould is going to be writing a book about uh, Mr. Tang, I understand. And so um, there's no question that will go unanswered. And I, I do thank you for attending today and for your attention to uh, my client's interests. If we sign this document, that means we have confidence in Mr. Town. But does that mean we're going to lose some of our rights in the future because Mr. Tang is now facing the charges and does that mean our legal rights will be deprived in the future? Absolutely not. Out of the question. The only significance of signing the document is that you're giving a vote of confidence so that the OSC will say, okay, Mr. Tang, you and the senior portfolio manager can trade on behalf of only those persons. And whatever happens to your money, it's um, supervised through all the regulations that are in place in Ontario. And, um, and the only other thing that would be a consequence of signing the document, other than hoping that Mr. Tang will uh, be allowed to give his advice to the portfolio manager on your behalf, is that you may be contacted by members of the media uh, or by the OSC itself to say, why are you thinking of investing in somebody that's already lost money for you? Because that's what makes this story very interesting, and there's going to be a great deal of interest in what happens on the 13th, because you can research this up and down the block, but you're not going to find anybody facing charges as serious as Mr. Tang is facing, and they are serious charges, and he's taking them very seriously, uh, who uh, has the amount of investor confidence that Mr. Tang does. See, he's an original. Well, uh, you act as Mr. Tang's lawyer. Mr. Tang is the accused. We are the accusers. Now, according to the law, you're not supposed to see us, and that itself is a violation of the law. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. You're not his accusers. His accuser is Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. On behalf of her, the agency of the Crown, the OSC, is acting on behalf of the public. The investors are not the accusers, the state is. Nothing whatsoever improper about my contacting 
persons who have knowledge of the matter at issue on behalf of my client. I just hope that under the supervision of, of the OSC, Mr. Tang is able to recoup our losses. And that the obligation of this commission is to protect the investors. Yeah, the OSC issued the cease trade order after Mr. Town's incident broke up. For new investors, that would be the cease trade order would be a protection. I think it's a timely decision of the OSC. But for existing investors who have lost so much with Mr. Town, how to protect our interests, uh, how to minimize our losses, isn't that an issue that the OSC should have in consideration? Absolutely. And that is absolutely what they are going to be considering in full detail on November the 13th. I personally think that Mr. Tang has so paid so much tuition using uh, scores of millions of dollars from the investors. I assume he has really accumulated some experience and ability to make that money. I hope the OSC will permit Mr. Town to trade on our behalf under their supervision. I don't understand is Mr. Tang has been in the market for 15 years. Didn't the OSC know anything about that? Yeah, Mr. Tang has published his book. He has been on television for so many times. His uh, office was right in the uh, financial uh, downtown core. The OSC aware of that? Yeah, Mr. Tang has sponsored and organized so many events. Wasn't the OSC aware of that? All of these matters are issues that are going to be dealt with. Uh, if the OSC knew nothing about those events, uh, wouldn't that be a negligence, negligence of their duties? You're not going to hear any negative comments uh, from me or from Mr. Tang about the OSC. That is a duly constituted government body that is doing its job. <laughs> I support the OSC in their continued uh, inspection of Mr. Tang's details. I wish the OSC would be able to recover millions of dollars to pay us back for the losses. And then put Mr. Tang in jail. However, if they can't find any money, is the OSC going to pay us anything? I don't think that's possible. Well, there's, a, there's a fund right now that uh, people are fighting over. I forget the amount. I think it's uh, 200000 400000 something like that. And um, there's a court case that's taking place on Monday, and it's probably going to be adjourned to November. Um, 
because um, the, there's a number of investors that um, are wanting to get paid out of that existing fund. Investors who have got both their principal and interest back, are they willing to take out anything to give to us? Oh, I, I haven't spoken with them, but if I know human nature, the answer is no. Impossible. My conclusion is that the only possibility is that Mr. Tang is permitted by the OSC to continue trading on our behalf so that our losses can be recovered. Thank you very much for your vote of confidence for my client. It's Zhou Jianqiang. I'm trusted by two other uh, investors who have authorized uh, me to come here to represent them. Ask a couple of questions on their behalf? Certainly. Mm. It's the pretext. Uh, what money is Mr. Tang going to use to make that trade, to do that trading for us? If, if he doesn't have any money at all, and even if he gets the permission from the OSC, what's the significance of that? So are we doing this for the interest of the, uh, of the clients or for Mr. Tang? Okay. Yeah. And you can raising his uh, doubt on the sincerity of Mr. Tang's uh, you know, intention to make money and recoup a lot to pay, uh, pay us back. He has serious doubts about how serious Mr. Tang is. Okay, well, right. well, it's, but I said this is not an issue between the lawyer and uh, I'd like to address this. I'd like, to, I'd like to address this. I'd like to address this. Uh, uh, my, uh, my Mandarin is very rudimentary, but my understanding is that uh, this gentleman has aired concerns about Mr. Tang's level of seriousness and his level of ability to get the money back. You can... The response to that is that the beauty of this system is that every investor is 100% free to make up their own mind based upon knowledge of all the facts, which are all out in the open, and if you have any questions, they'll be answered, and they can invest with Mr. Tang in future as they see fit or not. Whether Mr. Tang is serious or not, uh, this much I know about him. I know that he's extremely serious. And I know that he has at all times professed that the interests of investors are his primary concern. But that's your own call. Okay, what well, that is that Mr. Tang is our debtor. He owes money to us, right? If you have doubt about his ability and confidence, uh, forget about your money. Uh, those who sign it, they are waiting to get their money back. So if Mr. Tang does make the money, we get the money. Okay? If you don't sign it, you don't have to worry about your money anymore. Those of you who want only justice, uh, forget about your money. But those of us who want their money, you can sign it. It's your own decision. But I am the crab eater. I, I trust those of you who are waiting to see the result can treat me as a crab eater. I'm the first one to eat a crab. So, meaning um, I am the one to test. Or the beef eater, right? Right, the beef eater. Right. Well, in, in Mandarin, we say the first one who eats a crab is the most the bravest person. Yeah. Or uh, in the majority. Would you say that's the case? There are more people here in favor of...